वेलकम बैक गैस सो इन दिस वीडियो आई एल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट पी एस वीटा एंड्रॉयड एमुलेशन वीटा थ्री के इज अ पी एस वीटा एमुलेटर अवेलेबल फॉर विंडोज एंड लिनिक्स इट्स एंड्रॉयड पोर्ट हैज़ बिन कन्फर्म दिस इज अ पोस्ट दैट वॉज मेड ये स्टडे ऑन एमुलेशन ऑन एंड्रॉयड सब क्रेडिट पेज कन्फर्मिंग दैट वीटा थ्री के पोर्ट फॉर एंड्रॉयड इज इन द वर्कस एज ऑफ नाउ इट इज इन ओली डेवलपमेंट स्टेज डेवलपर मैक टू अलॉन्ग विद वीटा थ्री के टीम इज वर्किंग ऑन इट नाउ आई हैव ऑलरेडी टेस्टेड द विंडोज वर्जन ऑफ Vita 3K. I ran a few games that were in the playable list. Most of them ran at full speed. I was not able to get Call of Duty Black Ops declassified working at all. A game that is marked as playable. One thing that I noticed was that the emulator was not very demanding on the hardware. I do think that a modern mid-range or high-end processor is powerful enough to run most of the Vita games at full speed. The emulator also has a compatibility list. Around 300 games are marked as playable. Now if you are interested in PS Vita emulation you should have an idea about its hardware I do have the original PS Vita there it is the display supports touch controls as you can see the handheld was released way back in 2011 powered by a 32 bit quad core CPU ARM Cortex A9 cores even the modern day mobile phones are powered by ARM based CPUs they support 64 bit architecture It has a quad-core power VR-based GPU, 128 MB of VRAM, 512 MB of RAM, and it also has a proper controller layout. These are the face buttons, two analog sticks, D-pad buttons, select and start buttons. We also have two cameras, one in the front. The other one is right here on the back side. On the back, we also have a touchpad. We don't have any triggers. These two bumper buttons are present. Right one, left one. Very expensive proprietary memory cards are used for storage and for running games. Cartridges like these were used. It was an expensive platform. Along with the exclusive PS Vita games, Vita also featured some PlayStation 2 ports. You can see God of War collection running on my Vita. All right, back to the Android emulation. So the developer Mac2 has shared the emulator's interface. Select the language. That's it. Vulkan renderer. Well, at least for the GUI and reading Android assets done. On Windows, I was able to switch between OpenGL and Vulkan backends. Now I'll have to implement a way to open the file dialog as NFDE does not work on Android. Now a user named Good Afternoon shared some useful information regarding the screenshot shared by developer Mac2. Quoting Good afternoon. It is worth noting that the screenshot he showed was an x86 underscore 64 version of Android. Most phones run an ARM 64 version of Android. Now these two are entirely different architectures of CPU. Compatibility of apps is an issue here. One of the biggest challenges will be the porting of Dynamic, the CPU emulator for Vita 3K to ARM, as it is currently only written for x86 underscore 64. The Citra team did a version of Dynamic for ARM64 and we are hoping it will be a drop-in solution but it might not be in short coming along well so Dynamic is the CPU emulator for Vita 3K one of the biggest challenges that Vita 3K team faces is to port Dynamic to ARM based architecture it has been done in the past by Citra team and i hope Vita 3K team will also be able to do it in the future For now things are going well but it can still take some time before a proper android build is released so guys I'll end the video here I hope you found it useful thanks for watching and have a nice day